Hello everyone, it's me Jenny and it's time for another coming commentary! Uh, for those of you who don't know what this is, I record on my web camera, so that's why it's low definition, um, and why the audio is not as normal, because I tend to ramble, because I respond to every single one of your comments, every single one, if I possibly can, uh, both by text message, which I have just physically responded to all your comments from last week's video, so Monday to Friday, Monday, Monday to Sunday last video, last week, Wow, great way to start. Monday to Sunday last week, I've just text responded to all of your comments, and now I'm going to commentate on your comments, because I like to make this a conversation, um, and it's hard to do that uh, without live streaming everything, um, and that would be something that I couldn't really do, but um, if you do want to talk to me, IRL, um, not IRL, you know what I mean, live, um, I do Twitch streams every Sunday, and if there's any problems with that, I will update you on my Twitter. So um, that is twitch.com slash class librarian. My Twitter account is took it home to Jen. So if you guys just want to chat to me anytime, Sundays, um, that's 11 to 12 GMT, uh, Greenwich Mean Time. Um, at the moment, I think that's around um, uh, three-ish in Pacific Standard. Time. Don't quote me on that, but yes, because I can't live stream everything, I commentate to you to turn this into an actual conversation rather than just, you know, you type in, me type in, that sort of thing. Um, and the reason why I record on my web browser because, as you can see, I turn into a rumbly, fumbly, rambly mess, and I tend to talk a lot. So these videos can, can get quite long, um, so bear with me. Uh, if you'd like to click into another tab until you hear your name, feel free to do that. Um, but there we go. Use me like a very bad quality audio podcast, if you wish. Moving on. Uh, so last Monday's gaming video didn't get any comments at all, so I'm not going to be talking about that. Um, but Tuesday's video, my Atlantis, um, the Lost Empire review, um, we had a comment from Nathan Lyle. Um, who says he owns the DVD and he thinks he's one of the more unrated, dis underrated Disney movies, um, and Michael J. Fox played Milo. Um, I did comment that I forgot to look up who did the cast, but I recognised most of the voices in that film, um, and that totally makes sense, and Michael J. Fox says I would recognise his voice, um, and that's awesome. Um, and yeah, it is one of the most underrated movies. One of the problems that I had with it, and one of the things I said, talked about a lot in that review, was that I can see why it didn't work as a Disney movie. Um, it like defied so many of the tropes um, that were so well kind of defined um, as a Disney branded movie. And because it was being very, because it was doing something different, it didn't work for a public audience in the way that most normal types of those films work. Um, it obviously didn't make the money that most of the Disney films work. It was one of the ones, I think it nearly bankrupted Disney after doing some basic research. Um, and it was pre kind of the revival sort of, don't quote me on that, uh, or post the revival. It was one of the low points in Disney's history, um, which is a shame because it is a good film, but it's not a great film because it defies a lot of the tropes of the Disney brand. It definitely, like, because it was an experiment, a lot of the concepts that could work in a different format didn't quite feel connected. It is a really good film, um, it's a good kind of action-adventure film, it's not a good Disney film, and it's not the best type of action-adventure movie, because it was such an experiment, it feels like it was written by an inexperienced adventure writer, it, the pacing was slightly off. That's not to say it wasn't a really good film, and I would recommend it, but it just it felt occasionally like it hadn't quite been um, thoroughly gone through in the same way that all of the other Disney properties are, because they have such a fixed formula, they can really streamline the process and they can really, you know, make that really well-paced three-act story. While because they were doing something so different with this movie, it felt like they were slightly inexperienced on in how they were actually going to juggle that plot and manage it all. Um, but definitely is an underrated movie, it is worth watching if you're interested in action adventures, or just seeing Disney do something unique. Um, I feel like, as I said, you can read a lot into um, some of the gender um, uh, empowerment slash domination, depending on your perspective, um, if you wish to, or you can read into a lot of um, Rachel um, themes. There's a lot of themes that were twisted into that, so if you want to do some sort of um, social study um, analysis into it, uh, whether it's gender or race um, or um, culture, 
Uh, you can definitely read a lot into that film, positive and negative, depending on what your perspective is. Um, so if you're interested in over-reading into Disney films, also do that. Uh, moving on to my Wednesday video, um, uh, BRB, I guess. Um, I was very, not very ill last week, but ill enough to be off from work, and that, for me, is very ill. Um, I, I definitely, I hate being off work. There's, there's nothing worse than the feeling of guilt from actually being sent home from work. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's, you know, I hate that feeling. Um, but there we go. Um, at least said, yay, yay. Uh, so she has the same socks, which is awesome. Uh, my foxy socks, um, which featured in that film, that particular film with the fireplace and the cat. Um, I love those socks. Those are my foxy socks. They're adorable. I love them to bits. Um, and she has the same ones. And she said, also said, I hope I feel best soon. And I'm feeling better soon. In fact, um, I felt better soon last week when I did my comic commentary, which I actually filmed on Sunday, even though I was meant to film on a Wednesday, even though I was meant to film this one on a Wednesday and it's a Saturday. It's, uh, this week is another mess. I, I, I am trying, I am succeeding in producing a video for every day that there is of the week. I'm just not succeeding in putting them out at the right time. I'm great at this. Let's move on. Uh, Marco Manu says um, in the past five ish years, he has taken maybe two days sick, which is good job. Um, I'm not the kind of, like, if I had a cold or I think I, I would be in work no matter what. Um, it's just when it's a, you know, Stomachy stuff, you've got to be out of work. It's a legal precedent um, within my employment that uh, if there's any symptoms of the stomach virus -y kind, you physically can't be in the building, um, which is uh, just because it's a high risk uh, clientele. Um, there we go. Um, moving on to my naked truth on Batman v Superman, of course, the topic. Um, everything I'm hearing about the, like, the thing with the Batman v Superman film is everything that all of the trailer analysis people said and everything that I thought about the film is exactly what all the reviewers are saying it is like oh, it's so like the fact that it's so predictable in exactly what the response is to this film is tragic because I really like all of the fan nerds out there wanted this film to be so good and every single thing they were like we really hope we think it might be this sort of thing, and we really hope it's not, has been in the reviews. Like, I've said it before, the only reason why I would want to watch this movie, as someone who's not particularly a high DC fan, is for Wonder Woman. Um, the only thing I think I would enjoy are the visual aesthetics, and I think that Ben Affleck would do a great Batman. I think he's got the um, good Bruce Wayne aspect and the good Batman aspect. Um, aspect. I think he's older and I think he's got the maturity to act the hell out of it. And that's everything that I've heard that's good about this film. Wonder Woman, the direction in terms of the visual aesthetic, and the fact that Ben Affleck worked his ass off. Um, those are the three good things. Those are the, three, the only three things I expect should be good. And then everything else, everyone else's problems that they said from the trailers through to the thing is what everyone else's problems. And I will say I haven't seen the film. Because the only reason why I watched the film anyway would be for Wonder Woman. So I'm just going to wait till her film comes out. But, like, it's just, it's so, it's tragic and it's frustrating. I imagine it's the same thing for everyone else. That what they predicted would be the problems and what they could have maybe sorted out in some sort of post-production-y things. Exactly what came into effect as the negative things for this film. It's everything I've heard. Everything I've heard from every source on the internet that is reported on this thing. And my local newspaper and you know well local the newspaper that we have in the house the physical paper newspaper the review that very rarely agrees with any other review i've seen agrees on all of the same factors and it's so weird it's so weird i've never actually seen such a blanket response across every media for the same agreement on all the topics of a film. I've never seen it happen before. I've never seen my newspaper, who usually reviews any nerdy film terribly, review the film in exactly the same way as everyone else on the internet. It blows my brain. It's just, it's so weird. It's so weird. I'm sorry, but that tangent. Whew. Moving on to the actual comment commentary, um, Trisha said the variety of stories is the reason why the debates get so heated, is because of the way that the backup just bits about the argument, and thank you for this great vlog, so thank you Trisha. Um, yeah, one of the things I said was uh, one of the reasons why um, the argument is so convoluted in terms of Batman versus Superman is 
if you're after it for the story, if you're after it for the characters, there's so many different versions of this story of Batman v Superman. There are so many different versions of those characters, like a soft-hearted Clark Kent and a soft-hearted Batman, because those two characters exist, and a hardcore Batman and a hardcore Superman, because those two characters exist. If they come into a battle, depending on what universe you're in and what generation you're in and how old they are and what the stats are and whether or not Superman is flipping put a missile into the sky. I don't really know. There's a plot thing in one of the movies that I watch where the he puts a nuclear into the sun, a nuclear warhead, and then it's all weakened. Like, there are so many different plots and so many different versions that any story that you want can come into effect. Um, so, yeah, it's so hard to get actual evidence for a finite story because there is no finite story. The story is the concept of these two juggernauts coming into effect. And in the end, it's kind of like... Really, really strangely, it's kind of like Alien vs. Predator, the movie, where the subheading was whoever wins, we lose. Um, except in this case, it's whoever wins, someone wins. <laughs> but there we go. Uh, moving on. Wow, I am so rambly. I'm, I'm very hyperactive. It's been a very busy day today. I've just watched um, uh, a very good um, adaptation of um, Charlotte Bronte's uh, Jane Eyre. Uh, on the TV with my family for Easter, um, we all snuggled up on the sofa, um, all, uh, all four of us, minus my twin sister who is still unfortunately at work, um, and uh, we all snuggled up and uh, watched this film and oh my god is it emotionally draining and so I think I'm on a high after the, the emotional draining of uh, you know Michael Fassbender being pretty freaking awesome in that film um, and the direction being fabulous and tangents, 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 tangents. <sighs> Marco Mano on the Trisha Hirschberger's Naked Truth on Batman v Superman. Focus. This is why I use my blooming web camera, because my gosh, this would be ridiculous. Whew. Marco Mano says, having seen the movies and the TV from both, he prefers the Marvel Universe, but can still see pretty much everything DC has to offer. He's actually really enjoying The Flash and Supergirl, and he thinks that DC is doing something right with TV that, TV that they didn't quite get like the movies that like the Marvel movies are doing yeah I can get that um I hear a lot of good things about DC TV um I will say that I have tried and failed to get through um Arrow I really really tried in the same way that I really really tried to get through Hawaii 5 um and I really really tried to get through CSI Miami like there is a point where some of the stuff is compelling and some of the stuff is stupid enough to be entertaining um and there's enough kind of monster of the week stuff that you can settle into it and watch it brainlessly and there's enough kind of stuff that you're like oh that's actually a character thing okay that's great um but having had no pre-existing interest in the characters and more for the not finding them frustrating in some capacity or another um, the fact that American TV series are so long, they're 24 episodes, like in England, you know, most uh, series are like 11 episodes, you know, the one of the best series that have been brought out in the UK ever is obviously Sherlock, which is three episodes per series, um, they're obviously long episodes, but they're like, it's less draining, it's less repetitive, it's less uh, an exercise in futility, um, and I've tried so hard, and as one of the things I talked about in this movie, in this in this particular Naked Truth, is I'm very, I'm I'm not obviously diagnosed with compulsive in any capacity, but I'm very much a completist. I feel like I have to, I really like starting from the beginning and getting to the end, um, which is very difficult with all these ongoing, long-running series. That if you don't start with it and carry on through with it, it's hard to catch up. And it's hard to keep the momentum to catch up in order to get to a certain end point. Like, I dread to think someone who wants to start watching Game of Thrones now because I, on the catch up for this new season that's coming out, I watched the first episode and the last episode of the first five seasons and then caught up on the last season. And that felt like a real, like binge watching is an active part of most people's life nowadays, but that felt like a real kind of enjoyable, but like trial to get through it all. There is so much content that's out there and it's very hard to keep up with it all. So, um, as I said, I find it really hard to keep up with Arrow. It's like I get to about half, I got 
first time I watched it, I got about halfway through the first season. The second time I managed to get halfway through the second season and the third time I managed to finish the second season. Um, before I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Um, I think I will give Flash and Supergirl a go at some point. Um, but because I, again, have no relation to those characters, I really don't connect to them in any specific way. It's going to be a bit of a grind, I think. Like with the Marvel TV universe, you had the Marvel Cinematic Universe to branch off from, you had Coulson, you had Peggy Carter, so you had those introductions, um, because I came in with, like, I grew up, in a weird way, with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, it's a starting point, um, so I can feel a lot more invested in the Marvel Cinematic Universe as it builds. Um, I think the only character that I really, really liked, um, other than the X-Men, was Daredevil, and yes, that movie, the Ben Affleck movie, is not good in hindsight, but I enjoyed it as a, you know, older child, young teenish. Um, I have a lecture on DVD for crying out loud, like, I can appreciate some aspects of those two films, um, whether or not the little emo, evanescence loving little, little, little teenage Jenny in my soul um, has anything to do with that, I don't know, but, um, like, I'm loving the Netflix series, I love Deborah Ann Wall, in fact, I love Charlie Cox, I love the entire cast of that series, um, and that is doing something that somehow links in with this universe, the fact that you can have the different scales of emotional beats and rhythms, and yet all of the characters in the Marvel Cinematic Universe are still likeable, um, it's just, like, I find it so hard to enjoy Arrow because the main character is kind of an ass in the most annoying way possible. He's not like a likeable ass, he's not like a castle, um, and he's not like a, I don't know, Star-Lord, um, and castle, I mean Rick Castle from the series Castle, who's played by Nathan Philly and who's got the charisma of a flipping god. Um, I'm so tangenty, I'm, I'm not gonna even look at the timestamp, this is, this is terrifying today, I'm, I'm so sorry, it's been weeks of half-hearted comic commentaries, I'm going all out. Um, it's so hard to like the DC characters, um, because they've had success, the Nolan, Nolan film had success because they brought it to a dark and grounded level after the camp. The very, very popular, very, very camp, and they brought it down to a very, very dark ground level, which was very successful. Marvel has this kind of mid-level upbeatness, and in order to differentiate from that very successful upbeat mid-level, DC are going ground level, as down and as grim as you can get, which is not fun to watch, um, while somehow Jessica Jones and Daredevil are incredibly dark, and I will say I haven't finished season two of Daredevil, so no spoilers, anyone who spoils me in the comments, you're bad people, um, <laughs> um, but like they managed to still make the characters likeable, you're still following them, you're still invested in them, um, whether it's because the universe was created already and built up in a way that's realistic and you can engross yourself in it in a comfortable way, I don't know, but Marvel has mastered empathetic characters, DC Frustratingly not so. Um, I will possibly get into Supergirl and I will possibly get into Flash, but because there's no other part of that universe that I'm interested in, um, if there is, like, for example, Agent of the Shield, I probably will watch it at some point, but I'm not that invested. But I am invested in the overall universe, so I might catch up on Marvel series before the next um, Marvel film comes out, which is the reason why the Marvel Cinematic Universe is so successful, because makes you want to watch the stuff that even if you don't really want to watch it too much you kind of want to watch it just to be a part of the whole world to experience every aspect of it the dc cinematic universe is such a mess and such a mixed bag of negative for the most part that it's very hard to jump into um the fact that they've had to rush this whole dc cinematic universe in order to you know stop the decline of this ridiculously successful Marvel thing, it's very negative, they didn't get, like, the fact that their precursor to the Marvel and uh, DC Cinematic Universe was Man of Steel has set it off on a very, very kind of wonky foot, 
um, they may be able to crawl out of it, and then I think their saving grace is Super um, Supergirl series and the Wonder Woman film because Marvel has consistently shown it sucks at doing female-driven shows. Apart from apart from Jessica Jones, um, it sucks at doing female branding, um, and I think that's where DC is going to really reach its peak because it's got something that directly appeals to women. Um, it's got a female superhero whose film is coming out in July 2017. Um, not too far in the future, far enough in the future that I'm like, when is it going to come? And I can be disappointed later. Um, but I will watch that film because it's got a female heroine in it. Um, and I want to see that. Um, I think that's the only saving grace that's really making me want to root for DC at the moment is the fact that they're actually actively taking a position on female heroines. Um, but there we go. Um, we'll see how it goes. Um, I think um, Marvel is incredibly, incredibly successful. I think they need to show more diversity, both in gender and race and um, uh, LGBT um, in order to kind of blossom into the only field that they're not really blossoming in at the moment because they've got enough variation that they have the fun they have the mid-level and they have the dark and yet it all works because the characters are likeable i think the only thing they can do to improve it is have slightly more representation um and dc i don't know how they're going to save themselves other than to they can't keep rebooting so i guess the best thing they can do depending on what their next film is is to either really try and separate it out and do it bit by bit like the marvel cinematic universe is doing i like do one film at a time and really simplify the stories but now that they've got all of the connections they need to simplify the stories and just do a one film at a time instead of cramming three films into one um or they need to continue with their separation of their universes um we shall see. Tangent, 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 tangent. I, I really, I'm dreading looking at the timestamp for this time. I'm so, I'm, I'm terrified. I'm terrified of how long I'm going to be talking for. This is really bad. It's three o'clock in the morning. It's three o'clock in the morning, you guys. It's so, oh gosh. Okay. Uh, back to the comic commentary. Uh, after that incredibly long interlude, um, KSJ says the interesting thing about the movies is how much they've changed. Batman movies were so much more campy until the reboot this century. The modern wave of superhero movies and the realism in the style probably can be said to have begun with X Men in 2000. I think there was a whole like the nerds have come into the cinematic world. They are now the producers and the writers and the directors. The eighties children, the ones that grew up taking comics seriously, are the ones that are now in power, which is the blossoming of nerd culture, um, both from a technological standpoint to a story based standpoint. Like, you know, ten years ago they would not have made Game of Thrones. Um 20 years ago, certainly not, both for the concept of it being so raunchy, but it just wouldn't have been taken seriously. There's a brilliant video out there which is, um, you know, uh, what if Game of Thrones came out in the 90s and it's got like VHS like um, fuzz on it and it's like, you know, the music's very campy and stuff. Um, it just wouldn't have been taken seriously, it would have been tinfoil, and so I think a lot of the fantasy stuff has come from Lord of the Rings has a huge impact on nerd culture and um, fantasy culture. The Matrix has also a huge influence, obviously. As you said, the X-Men film had a huge impact as well. Uh, Blade came out around that same time. The late 90s, early 1000s was when that started to shift into a more serious human world for superhumans. Um, the fact that sci-fi could be taken seriously, the fantasy could be taken seriously, and viewed as a from an adult perspective, um, you know, it's, it's very interesting to see where the cinematic universe is going to be taking um, both DC and Marvel. I have to say, though, of all of the stuff that's come out, Jessica Jones and Daredevil have been the high point for me. They're the only ones that really balanced. Again, I haven't finished season two, so no spoilers. Um, I can't really say for sure, but they're the only ones that have really truly balance something that's 
truly extraordinary in that it's got almost the same energy as Sherlock, um, but also has the level of maturity and sophistication. It's very clean, it's very well cut, it's dealing with a lot of issues in a very dark, dark way, but also bringing levity and likeable characters, as well as being dang pretty. Um, and being complex and mature and I need to turn off this tap because I've been the next one's called word vomit and pretty much I've already done that for this past I don't know how long I really don't want to look at it um so uh word vomit on YouTube in its limitations and inspiration um KSJ said um his finger moves towards the unsubscribe button oh no but um, where would he get all my rambly comment commentaries well this certainly counts as that um Baxon says, F pretentiousness, you be you. Um, of course, do what you're comfortable with, just don't get into too many details for real life because um, it's either boring or sometimes it's just generally irrelevant. Um, but you're the first thing from pretentious. Aw, thank you. Or annoying. Woo! Very cute. Aw. Um, annoying, no. I definitely feel like I can be annoying. Um, I know this is a fact because every entity on this planet can be annoying in some capacity or another. Um, and I have sisters who, you know, tell me when I'm being annoying for the most part. Um, but thank you nonetheless. Um, and I hope you guys aren't annoyed with this sun plethora of six videos coming out in one day. Sorry. Um, because basically as soon as this is filmed, uh, all of my other videos will be going public. So, sorry. Um, Eric Dye says, this video expertly speaks to the true metaphysical level of subtle context, are riveting and transcendental to the true artistic vision, mm -hmm, monocles. <laughs> um, yes, that video uh, spoke a lot about pretentiousness, so good on the pretentiousness side of things. Talking of pretension, um, one of my videos uh, was me eating soup in the kitchen um, and talking about um plans and ramble and other things not that any of these videos have proven anything other than rambling but there we go uh Marco Mario says soup is good his favorite soup is cream of chicken with rice loads of white rice and crackers which sounds lovely it sounds like a good kind of comfort food chicken soup is my favorite soup um uh, unless I smell it before it's warmed because then otherwise it smells like cat food um but it's still nice when I eat it and it's warm. It's kind of like my go-to, like, I just want something that's really quick and easy and I know what I like, and that's chicken soup. Um, but I've never had it with rice. It sounds really good. It sounds like a good kind of combo. I think when I was in uni, I used to put couscous in it. Um, and that kind of expanded and made it, like, thick and gooey and just slightly more calories, which was good, um, while being pretty cheap. Um, KSJ says, not sure, um, but he might have had Campbell's brand of New England clam chowder which sounds interesting. I don't think I'd personally like it, but I'm sure each to your own. Um, I'm starting to lose feeling in my feet, guys. I've been sat here way too long. Oh my gosh, pins and needles. Oh, oh my god. Mm. Um, Baxon says, favourite soup of all time is corn soup, because it's just corny that way. One sec. Ah. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> serious pins and needles. Um, <laughs> uh, um, I talked also about using um, a very unsafe tripod for my camera that day. Um, so he says that he uses um, books for his tripod and once tried to type his tape his tape words uh, tape his phone to the wall and spent more time on the tape than on the video. So that's one way to do it. Um, my sister has one of those like spider um, tripods where you like it's like a three like tripod which has all like curly legs which you can curl around tree branches and stuff. Never tried using it. I have my tripod. Um, I have the the stool that is currently bouncing my laptop on top of. That's what I used to use as my tripod, um, which is actually perfect height with my current tripod tripod. So um. You know, it was a good technique, and then I accidentally broke my dad's tripod um, while doing something. I think I was filming something in the woods, and a part fell off, and so I bought myself a new tripod because otherwise my dad probably would have strangled me um, in the nicest possible way. But I, I have a habit of breaking things, um, so after breaking my dad's tripod, I was like, I shall buy my own, um, and that way I have no excuse, and he can't um, get angry at me because if I break my own tripod, it's only my own fault. Um, moving. Uh, Nathan Lyle says um, he uses whatever soup, whatever spoon is clean. I was talking about um, whether or not anyone knew the difference between a normal spoon and a soup spoon. 
Um, if you do, feel free to put that down in the comments. Um, and once use an empty Pringles can as a tripod. So I've done that before, I'm pretty sure, because it's actually it's pretty good level. Um, there we go. Oh, uh, moving on to last week's Comic Country, which was again filmed on the completely wrong day. Um, Chris Ware um, made a GIF uh, slash meme clip, um, which is me going, "That's so cool! Oh my god, I love it!" or something similar along those lines, um, and posted that in the chat, which is also linked on the Project Chronicle um, channel. So if you want to see that little clip on repeat again and again and again of me going, "It's so cool!" Um, then <laughs> please do check that out. Um, and thank you, Chris, for the little bit of self promotion because it's also all good. Um, and he also, um, I think, posted it when he was modding for me the other day. So thank you for the self promotion slash promotion of me by you. So I don't, it's not technically self promotion, additional promotional activities, despite the fact that you're kind of preaching to a convert. But thank you. Um, Mark Armano says he missed my last comment commentary and guess he'll have to butterfly back. So far, the only butterfly that I spotted in the comments. Where are my butterflies this week, guys? Gosh. Um, moving on to last, but certainly not least. Oh my gosh, do my feet tingle right now. I need to just walk around a bit. I've completely lost feeling and blow my hips. Um, <laughs> Nathan Lyle says, um, did I watch The Reading Rainbow when I was a kid? And did I also watch... Um, Oh, he's my second butterfly. Hey, butterfly. Awesome. Two butterflies. You guys are the best. Um, Between the Lions. Um, I've never heard of Between the Lions, as far as I know, and I've definitely heard of Re Reading Rainbow. Whether or not I watched it as a child, I genuinely can't remember. Um, both of them sound like interesting programs. So, woo. Anyway, um, it is now 20 past three in the morning. I'm going to look at how long this video is. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, only 30 minutes. Could be worse. Um, there we go. Thank you all for watching. Have a lovely week. Um, I apologise for the huge amount of bursts of video that's coming out. I've been horribly neglecting my thumbnail, so hopefully, if and when I get up tomorrow, it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of effort to get up tomorrow. Um, if and when I get up tomorrow, I will hopefully update some thumbnails because they're terrible. I haven't done thumbnails in about four weeks, so it's, it's bad. Um, but uh, there we go, and my playlist is also out of date, so I just knocked, I just knocked my very wonky laptop. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll update my playlists and my thumbnails tomorrow. Um, I'm thinking of maybe, I'll, I'd like your opinion on this, switching my comment commentaries from a Wednesday to a Friday or Thursday. Um, I could do, like, if I, if I think of something else to do on a Wednesday, that would be perfect. Um, cause that way I've basically got the weekdays sorted. Um, if I can just think of one thing to do every Wednesday, that would be awesome. Um, because that way it just gives you guys a bit more time to get your comments in, um, before the comment commentary. And that way it would be, uh, Monday gaming, Tuesday, um, movie review, Wednesday something, um, Thursday naked truth and Friday comment commentary. Saturday, Sunday is still free for whatever I happen to be doing. Uh, Sunday, sort of creative Sundays, if I'm actually doing something creative. Or I could just leave Wednesday as a random day. Let me know if you think that would be a good idea. So that way I just switch my random day from Friday to Wednesday. Um, and switch over my comment commentary to Friday. Um, it just gives you guys a little bit more time. Um, it means that I have um, kind of two low definition videos per week. Which means it just cuts down my upload time by so much. Like this video, even though it's nearly 40 minutes long, uh, will still be take a hell of a lot less time to upload than, say, my movie review. Um, so there we go. That's my thought process. Um, that is my question. Would you like me to switch my comment commentary to a Friday? Do you have any suggestions? I'm asking that on pretty much all my videos. If you guys have any suggestions for things you'd like to see me do on this channel um, that aren't ridiculous or infeasible or creepy please do suggest them because I am in the middle of my quarter daily vlogging for this year crisis where I'm like what do I talk about um so you know I always get to the end of the week especially with the random days where I don't really have a set thing to do 
I always get to those days I'm like, I don't I haven't done anything this week, I don't know what to talk about. So anything that you'd like to see or be interested in seeing me do that's reasonable and manageable, I'd be really interested, especially something I could do maybe every week. Um but there we go. Um today's secret word of the day for you, those of you who managed to get to the end of this video. Um, and don't know what the secret word of the day is. The secret word of the day is, last week it was butterflies, if you hadn't worked that out. Um, I say a secret word at the end of the video, um, and then you kind of subtly put it in the comments down below. So just so I know that you've reached the end of the video. Um, just so I know who you are, and you kind of get the credit where credit's due. Um, because it kind of always seems slightly bad that like I don't know if you guys have got to the end of the video. Um, so today's magical word of the day is sun hat um so sun hat if you've got to the end of this video and you want credit for having watched all 36 ish minutes um put in the comments um the word sun hat um put it as subtly as you like or you could just put the word sun hat it's up to you um that way i know that you guys are insane um which is all good um and if you want to again comment on anything i've talked about in this video um you know i know some of you comment during the video as you go you just kind of add to your comment or just post individual comments during the course of the videos because they're so long um feel free to do that or you can just do one massive comment at the end or just comment on one thing i've said um anything you like is awesome um i am going to stop recording and go to bed because um as hyperactive as i am right now it is nearly half three so i should probably sleep even though tomorrow's a day off i probably do need to you know pass out um there we go thank you for watching i will see you guys all next week at some point for a comic commentary and i will see you all very soon because as soon as this is online there will be so many videos online you will be severely bored of me uh thank you for watching thank you for participating put the word sun in the comments if you've got all the way to the end and i will see you guys all very very soon bye guys